What is going on guys? Almost Average here. We are back in the hardcore world and we have a lot to do today. So we're going to be working on a bunch of different things. First of all, what I really want to work on is getting this base cleaned up. So as you can see, there's still stone and dirt in some of the walls, the roof of this base. So the first thing we're going to do today is actually clean some of that up. And then we're going to work on some more farms. What we're really doing in day 100 through 200 is building farms to set us up for the future. So we can do a bunch of crazy builds and not really have to worry as much about resources. And of course, as always guys, if you enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like on it. And if you're new to my channel, subscribe, stick around, check out the rest of this hardcore series. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be doing weekly uploads on this channel, just following along with what I do throughout the week. Uh, and we're going to be doing about 25, 30 days each episode. It really just depends on how much I can get done in that amount of time. So definitely stick around and check out this. It's going to be a lot of fun and hopefully we build some crazy things down the line. I really have a lot of projects in my mind, so hopefully we get working on those very soon. And of course, one of those projects is actually a ruined enchanting table that we're going to be building up. This is right above my base and I'm just kind of trying to go with a kind of stone variant, deep slate variant look with this. Uh, I'm not really too sure how I want to do this yet. I'm just going to make a few different designs of it and see how I like it. But this is going to be where my enchanting table is. You might have seen the bookshelves up top already. And I'm really just trying to add a lot of variance in here so it looks like a ruin. What I want to do with this whole island is cover it in ruins like this. And of course the jungle trees and bushes, things like that to make this thing look really cool. And so far I'm actually really liking the design that I went with here. So this is with the complementary shaders. I thought it looked really nice and I was really just checking out my world with them. But I think this thing looks incredibly cool. I wanted to build kind of a ruined altar with it and I'll probably add in some more trees and a lot of different shrubbery, vines, things like that around this to make it look like it's been covered uh, for a lot of years and really set into this area. And that's pretty much what I want to do with this whole island. Also, pretty much every Minecraft day I try to come and trade with these villagers with the melons and pumpkins that I'm getting from the AFK farms down below in the mines, and this has been a great way to get emeralds. Next up, I really want to finish off my netherite tool set, so we need to find enough ancient debris for three more pieces of netherite. So let's get to mining in the nether. Alright, that was actually fairly quick that we found our first piece down here, and it was just one piece. Alright. Alright, found another chunk of it. Hopefully there's more than one. And... Okay, just one block again. Decided I was bored of strip mining, so now we are just clearing out chunks to find netherite. Ooh, looks like we just found a piece. Hopefully there is more than one here. Um, heck yeah, we got two pieces of netherite. Oh heck yeah, and it looks like we found two more pieces of ancient debris. Hopefully there's a third here. And yeah, we got a three stack of ancient debris. Perfect, another set of ancient debris. We've gone through a lot of chunks now, a lot of chunks. All right, finally, this one took forever to find, but hopefully this is enough now to actually complete the, the set. Alright, so we got a ton of ancient debris and I was on my way back, but we're actually going to collect all this magma that's on the side of my staircase. This stuff is pretty useful in some different uh, farms, such as a piglin farm, so we're actually going to collect all this and hopefully use it for a gold farm later on. And god, I hate lava in the nether. Alright, so we got 13 pieces of netherite scrap. And now we need to do some trading to get the actual enchantments we need. We basically just need to trade for some mending books and then we will uh, re-enchant the axe, sword, and shovel to actually get the enchantments we want on those. Actually the sword is completely fine, it's one I picked up in uh, the end and I really like. So one small problem with uh, being outside with the enchantment table, there are a ton of mobs. Alright, come on, come on. Unbreaking 3, efficiency 4. Perfect, that's just what I wanted. And efficiency 4 on the axe as well. Also got a silk touch axe, so we will combine those and actually make a great god axe. We also need to put mending on the shovel and the sword, and then we should be all set to turn these things into netherite.
we are now fully decked out in netherite. Now we need to get our base all the way deep slated up and not covered in stone and dirt anymore. This has definitely been a huge problem, especially in the villager area, but I am now finishing off these rooms, so hopefully it'll look way nicer. This guy's inventory is full, so hopefully, there we go. Finally threw all those potatoes and can now pick all these up. Let's actually check how the, okay, yeah, the wool farm is actually going great. We've got a lot of white, gray, and green wool already, so that's nice to see. And the potatoes and carrots seem to be coming in nice, but there is a small problem with the carrot. Back down in the mines, the pumpkins and melons are actually going great. I collect these pretty often, though. All right, now it's time to work on our first farm for this episode, and we're going to be working on a generic mob farm, so I need a ton of stone to make all these spawning platforms. So we've got pretty much everything that we need down here. This mob farm design is by Nimbon. This is actually a mob farm I've built a few times in the past before. It works great. It's super efficient and produces pretty much everything you need from mobs. It'll produce uh, gunpowder, string, rotten flesh if you're just trying to trade that, bones, arrows. This thing is great for just getting a lot of different mob products. So I've already built a tower up to where I'm actually going to build this and we're going to head up, go into a time lapse and build this thing up so we can start producing some mobs. Alright, so I went ahead and put in all the water buckets and redstone, and this thing has been producing for about two minutes now tops, and we've already actually got a pretty good amount of resources for how long it's been running. Now, of course, I can't just have a giant ugly mob farm above the ocean outside my base, so we're going to go ahead and start phase two of this project, although this is a project I will be working on for a while. So these lines right here is actually how far the mob farm extends out. I'm just trying to get an idea of how big I actually need to build phase two of this project. And you can actually see this thing is working. Of course, got to put some carpets down so we don't get mob spawns down here instead of up on the platforms. So now let me tell you what phase two of this project actually is. It is a giant volcano that is going to encase this mob farm. And don't worry, I'm going to put carpets over the whole thing. That's going to be different types of moss and gray carpet, which is why I'm actually using that wool farm right now. And we are going to build a volcano that surrounds this thing. Of course, though, that is a huge project and it's going to take a long time. We're definitely not doing it in this episode, but I wanted to get an idea of how big this thing is going to be. Also, it appears that this water needs to be extended just a couple pulses to get everything pushed off. But anyways, I'm going to work on some ideas and designs for how I'm going to do this volcano because it is a huge terraforming project and we'll do it in a future episode. Alright, just came to get some more carpet and it looks like we need to light this thing up a bit better. We have two creepers down here and that could definitely destroy a lot considering there are two farms right there. That was actually, that's, wow. We are, let's check, 139 days into this game, and that was the first bucket of lava I have picked up so far. All right, well, I obviously never use lava, so that, that makes a lot of sense. I think right here is when I where I want to actually build this moss farm, right, right next to these. So it's still under our base and produces as often as possible. So we're going to clear out this little section, and then we'll, uh, we'll get to building. So as I just mentioned, our next project now that we've built up the mob farm is a moss farm. And right here is a moss farm designed by Il Mango. This is actually his world download. I'll link his video down in the description so you can go and check it out for yourself. But this farm, it's actually a bone meal farm and it produces a ton and ton of bone meal. I don't really care for the bone meal. I'll of course use the bone meal when I do produce some of it, but we're actually gonna change up the collection system to produce moss instead of bone meal. 
And of course, as I'm looking at this project, I realize that we don't have a lot of materials that we're going to need for it. Of course, all the redstone components we can build, we definitely do need some uh, resources to build like the hay blocks, and we're going to need some new shroom lights to include those as well. I don't think you have to use shroom lights for this design, uh, but it does look nice, so I'll probably use those. We do need to build up something that actually produces those a bit quicker than how we're currently getting them. This is definitely going to run our red store, redstone resources pretty dry, and we do need to collect some new blocks, including honey and ice. Those are blocks that we do not have at all yet. I do actually think I have some sea pickles in my world, so that's going to make things a bit easier. I don't have to go find those, but we are going to have to collect some serious resources in order to build this thing. All right, so this is the resources we have so far down here. We definitely need to keep these resources down here, but bring a lot more. We're gonna need a ton for this project. So first thing we're gonna collect is this obsidian, and then we're gonna go on a massive collection spree. And before we go do that, let's actually see how this mob farm is doing. It of course isn't super efficient because mobs are still spawning above me at the base, but we've actually collected a pretty good amount of materials here. And I really didn't think it'd be this efficient considering we haven't lit up everything around here. All right, fortunately, I do know where an ice spikes biome is. It was actually really close to spawn. So we're gonna head over there in the boat and then collect some ice. Alright, so we did a lot more than collect ice right then. We actually went and collected some terracotta as well. And you may be asking, why'd you collect terracotta? What's your plan for that? I have absolutely no plan for it. I was just passing the mesa biome and thought, wow, terracotta would actually be really useful for a lot of different projects. And if I collect it now, then I won't have to in the future. And wow, that mob farm is producing a lot. Okay, that's great. So it seems like when that is the only thing that is spawning in mobs, it's doing really well. But of course, we have a lot of other things that are spawning in mobs, so it's decreasing the efficiency of that. I also went and collected a ton of wood. We are going to need a lot of wood uh, for this moss farm project and everything else I want to do. So I went ahead and got that while we were out. And then you might have noticed I collected some beehives as well. So that's the thing we're going to work on first is a bee farm. We need honey blocks to actually make the moss farm. So first we have to build up a honey farm to actually get that material as well. So I went ahead and built up the honey farm. As you can see, it's right next uh, to the potato farm that I have right there. All encased in glass though, so the bees can't escape. Although it might actually improve the crops, I'm really not too sure about how that works, but I might look into it and let them go into that farm as well. Uh, as you can see though, we've got this all set up. It's a super simple design. All it does is has uh, comparators on the back that then activate the dispensers that have bottles in it, and it's all collected by hoppers underneath. Uh, this design was built by Gecko. I'll try to link that in the description down below so you guys can see that tutorial as well. Super simple though. It took me uh, like 20 minutes to build tops and that's just because I don't use comparators too often so I didn't really know what I was doing. So now we'll just leave this and hopefully collect some honey bottles in it so we can actually build this moss farm at some point. What the heck is... Go How did they get... Oh my god. An enderman has placed a block of sand and allowed my sheep to escape. 
All right, we, we need to figure out how to get Endermen to stay out of this place. We, we find them in here too often. All right, so we are actually out of time for this episode. The Moss Farm will have to wait for a future episode, although we still do need uh, to work on a lot of materials for that. I filled this honey farm up with bottles now, so it is going to produce hopefully a lot of honey. I really don't know how efficient this thing is, uh, but we'll see as I continue playing around here and we'll see how many bottles this thing ends up producing. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode though. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button as well so you can check out all the rest of this hardcore series. I'm gonna be posting this series weekly. Every Friday, they should be a new video. And whenever there's a 100 day milestone, I'll be uploading that over on Minecraft Hub for the time being. Uh, so go ahead and subscribe to that channel as well if you want to see the milestone videos and also all the rest of the daily content we post over there. Well, almost daily. We try to post every day. Thank you guys so much for watching though, and I'll see you next time.